I'm Jeff, and this is the JarfCast. Jarf! Today, I'm going to talk about iterative design and my first custom 3D printing project. I love my Blue Spark mic. Its retro aesthetic and rich sound make it one of my favorite pieces of kit. In the music store where I bought this mic, they were fitted with this custom pop filter, which I fell in love with instantly. The problem was, the new style of Spark microphones, they don't have the tapped hole in the back for the pop filter to mount. No matter, I'm used to making things work where they shouldn't. But at first, I uh, found a strip of hook and loop material right here, and some 3M adhesive. Jarf! It was functional, but it wasn't pretty. So the weight of the pop filter also pulled the adhesive off of the back there. Adhesive here, Velcro around the front. So it pulled apart and I'd have to put the adhesive back on like once a month or so, and I didn't like that. After I got my 3D printer, I decided, hey, I'm gonna make myself a custom adapter so that I don't have to deal with that anymore. I did consider drilling and tapping the microphone body itself, something I still may one day do, but I don't have a drill press or a tap set. So as soon as I got my 3D printer, I knew this adapter was gonna be one of the first projects I needed to try. The simple geometry and small size would allow me to rapidly develop and perfect my design without too much headache. To create the adapter, I needed a measurement of the diameter of the microphone, the length of the screw which holds it in place, and the dimensions of the M3 nut that I was going to use to attach the filter and the adapter. I could use the diameter of the microphone for the inner diameter of the adapter, and the screw for the offset to the outer diameter. The size of the nut would determine how thick it needed to be. I set about creating my invention in Tinkercad, which is a great way to create simple shapes like this. It just combine solids and empty spaces until you've got a final part. And it took me about 10 attempts to get an adapter that worked for me. The first couple were too thin, the screw didn't have enough clearance from the mic body to get a tight fit. Then when I increased the diameter of the entire ring, the pop filter no longer fit around the outside of the adapter. I shifted the inner hole towards the front and decreased the size of the outer diameter until the part fit once more and had enough room in the back for the screw to clear. For some finishing touches, I created notches for the 20 dB and high pass filter switches, and I also added some little wings to support the weight on the front of the adapter, so the screw didn't have to bear the full front loaded weight all the way from the back. Let's take a look at my CAD. Like I said before, Tinkercad works by letting you combine shapes, both solids and holes, to create a finished part. I started with the stumpy orange cylinder and created a second cylinder as a hole for the inner diameter. I combined the parts and I get a hollow cylinder. Then I needed to make the screw hole and the seat for the M3 nut. Next, I wanted the front to be open so I could slide it past the switches. Next, I needed to cut some extra clearances for the switches to move. Finally, I moved to the wings. I don't know what a professional would call these, but I'm calling them wings. Let's take one last look, going from all the shapes, and then combining everything into a finished part. Finally, let's take a look at what we've got. Oh dear. So, a pop filter works by interrupting the percussive force of what are known as plosives. These are sounds made by hard consonants like papa, tango, kilo, etc. The pressure wave creates a distortion as it hits the microphone. Consider the sentence, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. That sounds terrible with this pop filter because there's like no space between the mic and the pop filter. Now let's try it with this at a better spacing. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. See how it didn't smack into the microphone diagram causing that horrible, horrible noise? That's the value of a pop filter, a proper pop filter. Looks like I'm gonna have to get that tap and die set after all. I hope you found this interesting. Let us know, leaving a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you found it particularly great, maybe subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future DIY projects or whatever we come up with. Leave us a comment to let us know what you want to see in future episodes or if you just want to discuss this build. Till next time, I'm Jeff and this is the Jarfcast. Jarf!